What's up, dorks? I would love to tell you today why you should use containers in Power Apps. Oh, the world without containers is chaos and it's very messy. So containers help you organize things. They help you build better apps. They do. Y'all should be using containers in your Power Apps. Don't make a messy Power App make it organized. So in this video, I'll explore the basics of containers, their properties, and my three main use cases for them. First, let's take a peek at basic containers. So these, if you go up to your insert menu and go ahead and type in container, you get your three options here. The one we're looking for is the one on the bottom, just labeled container. So you insert this and it tells us that we can add an item from the insert pane. So we'll go ahead and add in some icons here, maybe an add user. We'll add a bell in there to remind you to subscribe. And we'll add in a like and dislike, but I hope you just like. So now you can see that all these objects are grouped together and kind of exist almost as one entity within the container. They almost exist as a group does, but I prefer using containers over groups because I find that you can still edit the things inside the containers easily and they still exist as their own objects. Whereas groups I find to be a lot more challenging to work with once you've got them contained within that group. So now that we've got these objects inside our container, if we go ahead and click on one, you can see that the X and Y property are 40. If you set them both to zero, it essentially acts as if this is the new edge of the screen. So normally the X and Y of your object is according to the whole screen, but once you place something in a container, it's actually referencing the container as its new bounding box. And in this video, that's really all there is to basic containers. Uh, they almost add like another layer to your screen. Uh, so why don't we jump over to directional containers, which are a bit more involved. And the next type of container we'll look at is directional containers. So these ones uh, provide more features than your basic container does. Um, we've got properties over here like direction, justify, align, gap, and your overflow settings, and then wrap as well. So to insert one of these, we type in container and then horizontal or vertical. They're actually it can be configured either way once you've got it on your page. So this is a vertical container. Um, it orients everything from top to bottom in the container. If I were to swap it to a horizontal orientation, everything lines up from left to right. So the next property we have on directional containers is called justify. And so this defines how the objects are distributed along the main axis, which is defined by our direction. So we can have it all go to the start where everything starts on in horizontal on the left side um, at the center. So everything's kind of crunched in the middle. At the end, everything's toward the end, or we can distribute everything with space between so it spreads out as large as it's able to. So justify defines things along the main axis, whereas align defines things along the secondary axis, which in this case, since our direction is horizontal, it defines it in the vertical axis. So this can also be at the start, which is the top, at the center, which is right along the middle, at the end, which is at the bottom, or it can stretch things out so they take up as much space as they can. So you can see that when I swap the direction back and forth, it actually changes these labels to let you know what that property is now affecting. So it's a little goofy to explain, but if you just go in and mess around with it, throw some objects in a container and change these settings, you'll kind of get a feel for how things are affected and how they align um, based on all your settings. So the next property is gap, which defines the space between your objects in your container. So right now we're at 15, we've got a little bit of space here, but if we drop this down to zero, everything is going to squish right next to each other. Um, whereas if we put it up to 50, we'll get a lot more space in between there. So the next property here is horizontal overflow. And I'm gonna turn off wrap on this real quick because it does affect it. Um, 
So if we look at this, it's a drop down and we've got two options here. We can hide things or we can scroll. And so right now, if I were to shrink this up, height is on and it hides our objects. It kind of clips everything. Whereas if I turn on scroll, we'll look at it. And you see, I get a scroll bar here at the bottom. So now I'm able to actually scroll and show more content on here. Uh, it does that in the vertical orientation as well. So you can have a second scroll bar. We'll switch this back to hide. Um, which if our container is a little too short to show everything, we get a scroll bar and we can scroll through our stuff. So most of the time you don't want scroll bars, but sometimes they come in handy. Just make sure you're using them when you want to. So we'll turn on wrap and check this out. And I find that this comes in handy mostly when you're building a responsive app that can change uh, the way it displays its content based on what screen size you're looking at. So currently we have enough room to display everything all lined up next to each other. But if our screen were not as wide, we'd still want to display that. So you can see as I pull it tighter, it starts stacking the content and moves it down to the next row. Uh, and that's the function of wrap. It basically allows your content to dynamically position itself. Should I just like repeat the question? Like, when do I use them? Okay. Hey, I've seen some of your apps. So I feel like me being like, you should always use them is not the way. <laughs> So I think you should use containers all the time, Mitch. <laughs> no. I think it makes the design process a lot easier and it makes it much more organized. So if we look at this screen here, everything that's contained within this container, I can hide it or I can show it. Whereas if we look at this screen where I've got plenty of objects on the screen, if we look over here at the left column, everything is at that top level and it's just messy. We don't know what exists where or what it goes with. Whereas if this were all in containers, we could easily collapse or hide them. Containers are useful when you want repeatability. So say you define a header or a footer section and then copy that same header and footer to the next page, you know where your object should exist. And you can use containers to create depth on your apps and create layers so you can show or hide content. So that's containers. Uh, I hope you like them as much as I do. I use them in all of my apps. Uh, so if you have questions, if you think there's something else you need help with or more explanation on, go ahead and ask in the comments. Um, otherwise, if you like what you've seen or want to see more stuff, go ahead and check out our channel. Um, like, subscribe, do all the great things. And that's that. <laughs> this is my first video, please be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's a wrap. <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs> I don't know, it puts them in a thing and then you move them around. You stick your boys in here and then your boys are one. <laughs> and that's what your container does. <laughs> it makes all of your boys one boy. <laughs>